Welcome traders to this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munley, on the new schedule. Uh, I'm going to be doing these sessions on Tuesdays now, and uh, we'll be looking at specific trade setups for the immediate trading week ahead. So before we get going today, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer most pertinent for today's presentation, the fact that the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine, they're not indicative or representative, those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. For those of you who are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself after I graduated from university. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, sometimes quite literally overnight, I decided to explore my curiosity for markets. Some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading the S&P 500 or more appropriately day gambling at that stage. But after some early beginner's luck, I've managed to rack up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into what would become losing positions. Essentially, I took a six-figure hit to my personal capital and say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. So I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months was a time during which I had not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, and all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and understand the true nature of trading, simply being a numbers game in which you're playing the probabilities, you lose that emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster ride of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of an individual trade or even a small string of trades. My focus on the next 100 trades, because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to tick mill clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the trading day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos for about two or three markets that I'm actually tracking, and I share those through the Tickmill Trading View accounts. And you will be—I'll post a link at the end of today's session uh, for you to uh, to follow along with those for those of you who are interested. I also run Tickmills. Uh, e-mini strategy group. This is shared through uh, through a Facebook group that you can request access to. I post a daily trade plan outlining my pre-market thoughts for the trading day ahead, giving my bias for the trading day and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the markets. These pre-market plans have delivered over 7,500 points of profit since we launched the group in 2021. Second tick mill strategy group I run is for tra traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. The tick mill futures telegram group is a real time environment where on a daily basis. I share in-depth insights, analysis and real time trades. I also provide live commentary during the opening hour of the New York cash session where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. 
These sessions essentially act as a platform helping traders to develop the a consistent approach to navigating the markets and those mental mind games that have to be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Let's jump into today's charts. And before we get going here, if you have any questions, feel free to drop those into the chat. Equally, if there's an instrument you'd like me to take a look at that I don't cover in my uh, presentation here, you can also drop that into the chat and I'll give you a view on the chart at the end of uh, at the end of the presentation. So let's start with the S&P 500, the E-mini futures contract I'm using. And we are still <coughs> moving higher. We are making uh, higher, high highs, high lows. Uh, this is the hourly time frame, obviously. What I'm looking for as we head into today's session are two areas of interest. One is going to be any test into the 3990 area. From there, I watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. I'm looking for a break through this trend line resistance. So any move back through 4025. Next stop is going to be a test of the 4040 level. And if we can get through there, I'm actually looking for us to trade up into these price cycle highs at 4070. It's been a tricky trade of late, as there's been quite a lot of consolidation in the, in the markets generally. Uh, but we are starting to see a pattern emerge here now. And this move from those lows where we tested on Friday uh, has impulsive qualities. And we're looking at corrective move here now. 39.90 or back through 40.25, and I wouldn't be engaged on the long side. Looking for 40.70s, uh, watching how price responds at 40.40s, and then if we can get through there, we have monthly projected range resistance up to 4100. At this stage, it's going to take a loss, a closing loss of 39.30 to suggest that we are done on the upside for now, and then we'll be looking at lower targets down towards the 3900 level again. Moving to the Nasdaq. <clears throat> NASDAQ has a similar setup, uh, looking for a test here of 12,626, which is the equality objective versus this current uh, corrective structure versus this impulsive advance here. And we also have the 38.2% retracement coming just below 12,600. So this is the area where I'd be looking for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for a test back up into the bull flag, uh, trend channel resistance, 12,900. And I'd be expecting that to break and for us to be looking to test up above 13,000. At this stage, in terms of negating the bullish structure, we'd be looking for a close back through 12,500 to open up a move down to 12,380 as the next downside objective. Moving to the Dow Jones, YM. So last time out, we were looking for a test of this trend line resistance. I haven't quite traded there. So today, any corrective moves up into that area, I'm still looking for another leg to the downside in terms of the Dow Jones. I'm looking for us to test this trend line resistance in this broader triangle pattern. So we are anticipating resistance into the 32,770 area. And from there, we are looking for a move down to test support into 32,200. From there, I watch for bullish reversal patterns and we'll be looking for a move then to re-extend to the upside. Looking at the DAX. Last time out, we were looking for this move away from the high volume load to the downside. That played out into the back end of last week, obviously. Now what we are anticipating is that we get a test into this trend line resistance again. And I'm looking for another leg to the downside into test support. Let me just draw this in for you guys. So what we're looking for is an equality objective. Yeah, so 14,913 is the downside target against the resistance here at 15,420. Once we get into this area, we'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns again to re-engage on the long side, looking for the next leg to the upside to re-challenge that 15,700. At this stage, any close back through 15,450 would be a, an immediate bullish development. And we'd be looking to engage on the long side, same upside objective, back into test, monthly projected range resistance at 15,700 on the upside. Moving to the UK and the FTSE. 
Fritzi continues its corrective move here. So <clears throat> whilst we hold the swing low at the 73.29 area, I'd look for any pullbacks into this trend channel support now coming in with daily projected range support at the 74.05 level. We've got a high volume area as well here, mostly against the 30 day volume, uh, volume profile look back. So any move into the 74 handle, Again, we watch for bullish reversal patterns. We want to engage on the long side. And I'm looking for a test of this equality objective, which comes in at 77.15. Now, from there, we could roll over again uh, to retest the price cycle lows. But that's going to be our immediate area of interest. So pullbacks into the 7,400 level, bullish reversal patterns, engage on the long side, targeting 77.40s. At this stage, we'd have to lose 73.38 to suggest the correction is actually already over. And then we'll be looking for a retest of the cycle lows down to 72.03. Moving to the Nifty. Nifty, last week we were looking for a test, uh, an equality test versus the swing low that we had in place last Thursday here at the 17,070 level. Didn't get that, we rolled over. So we're now in a bear flag scenario to my mind. So any moves now into the 17,100, watch for bearish reversal patterns. And I think we should see a breakdown through the support here now, uh, 16,900. Target to the downside is 16,000, let's say 16,650 there before we look for another corrective leg to develop in the nifty. Moving to the Hang Seng. <clears throat> so Hang Seng has an impulsive decline off the lows from uh, the 20th of March. So you can see it subdivides nicely. It's taken out a few key swing highs here. So this move looks imp impulsive. Now, what we were looking at last week was the potential for a correction to complete using the swing structure here, 19,390. Did get that. We've actually taken it out. So this is the first clue to me that the correction could actually be complete here. So what I'd be watching for as we... Uh, as we head into this week, is any pullbacks now into test the support at 19,760? Watch for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. And we have an upside objective now and a quality objective at 20,496. So pullbacks into this trend channel support should find buyers. And as they do, then we're looking for an upside extension to target the 20,000. 496 level. At this stage, only a close back through 19,500 would suggest the correction is complete. And then we'd be looking on the downside, targeting a move to retest price cycle lows at the 18,849 area. TRT, bond ETF chart is a little bit of a mess at the moment, but in terms of the structure as defined as it stands, we would be looking for a test of the 102 level, 102.66 uh, versus this current swing structure. So I'd be expecting it to develop in something like this scenario. And then from there, we watch that 102. We've got a gap just below us at 102.10. So any move into this area, we watch for bullish reversal patterns again to engage on the long side. And then the first port of call is always going to be that uh, corrective trend channel resistance as it stands. So that would have us trading back into this area here at the 105.70s. Dollar index. So dollar, we were looking for a test of the symmetry swing resistance last week. And we came, uh, let me just clone this. I'm just shy of getting a full test of it. There we go. So yeah, we came shy of getting the test. So what I'm anticipating now is the potential that we're in a more pronounced corrective phase, which would actually see us test lower and then set up another leg, which would complete into symmetry swing resistance. From there, I'd be watching for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side looking for uh, new lows to be made here. Now, the first clue for me in terms of the, the way I uh, assess whether or not the correction is already complete 
would be any break of the 78.6% retracement of the current move. So any loss of 101.80s to the downside would be a bearish development. And I'd be looking at short positions, looking for that break back through 101.50s and looking immediately for a test of the monthly projected range support down to 101.20s. But if we can hold above this 78.6% retracement, you can see what I'd be mapping here would be another leg to the upside, which would take us into that symmetry swing resistance that, uh, that we previously referenced. And oftentimes, once you've had one pullback uh, that matches the scope and scale of the initial uh, measured move that you're using, the second one tends to occur in more of a distributed fashion and over a longer period of time. So that wouldn't surprise me to see us consolidate, push up into this area and then get the next leg to the downside. But we already have a technical marker in place in terms of that 10180. If we take that out to the downside, then we're immediately going to be looking for, uh, for new short opportunities. Dollar CNH has a nice setup developing here. So from the lows that we got into the uh, 6.8099 level, but a nice five wave sequence to the upside took out just by a touch there a prior swing high which adds to the impulsive nature of the move so i'm looking at three wave corrective move into test the equality objective versus the current swing high 6.8908 we are looking for uh, 6.8651 as we test into this area we watch for bullish reversal patterns here to engage on the long side First target is going to move up into the range resistance and the weekly R1, 6.9131 uh, is going to be the technical target initially for that move. So that's one that I'm immediately watching in the coming sessions, has a nice structure and setup developing for a, for a trading opportunity there. Moving to the euro dollar, euro dollar continues to hold uh, the trend channel support. And while it does, I have an upside objective for the move here. Just draw this in for you. So we're looking at this equality objective, which has an upside target of 111.20s. First port of call for me is going to be a test of monthly projected range resistance. And so I'm looking at now any pullbacks into the pivot here, 107.80s. Want to see bullish reversal patterns from there to engage on the long side, retest the prior cycle highs, then move up into that 110 uh, rate, uh, monthly projected range resistance. And then we would look for another leg to push up then into our target zone of 111.20s. At this stage, it would take a close back through 107, 107.10 to suggest that the upside's done for now. And we'd be looking at a downside equality objective as the next downside target. But for now, the focus. Uh, is on the upside. Sterling, getting close to our target. We have an equality objective at 124.11. So for me at this stage, Sterling, either any pullbacks into the trend channel support or any close back through these price cycle highs, 123.40s, we want to engage on the long side, looking for that test into 124.13. What we'd then be looking for, or what I would be looking at, would be any pullbacks then. Let me just change this. So if we get an immediate extension up into our target zone, any three-wave corrective pullback back into these prior highs would also be an entry point because what we're actually looking for is a move then up into 125, 127s as the next upside targets for sterling certainly while we maintain this trend channel support in place there is uh, we are just looking at long positions in sterling for now we also uh, on the weekly time frame have a 127 trend channel resistance to uh, to also keep in mind dollar yen looking for another breakdown here if we get a close through channel support. So any move back through 130.40, once again, want to be involved on the short side, initial target back into that 129.60. But what we're looking for then is a test of monthly projected range support 129.12, and then onto weekly projected range support at 128.60. So that's the target zone for this move if we lose support through 130.40s. Singapore dollar, 
again. I was looking for another leg to try and get into this trend channel resistance, but in line with broader dollar weakness here, it looks like we're rolling over. Target for me is going to be a move down into weekly projected range support. From there, I watch for bullish reversal, uh, sorry, bullish momentum divergence, i.e. we're making new lows in price, but we're not getting new lows in the momentum study. And then that should set up a corrective move before once again looking to the next leg to the downside in terms of the Singapore dollar. We have monthly projected range support as low now as 130.90. So there are some, uh, some juicier downside targets in the Sing dollar. The Aussie and the Kiwi are kind of in no man's land still, very much sideways chart. So I don't have a specific trade as such. I'd wait for uh, wait for further uh, data before I'm looking at uh, any fresh patterns in those. Gold, I'm looking at a quality objective. Let me draw it in for you guys. So we have this structure here. So I'm looking for gold to test 1928 to the downside, essential that we do a three wave move here and then get that extension into that 1928. From there, I'm certainly paying attention, watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side as this essentially would complete a correction versus this impulse. And then we can start the next leg to the upside in gold. Firstly, obviously looking at the trend, corrected trend channel resistance, and then on through that $2,000 level is, uh, is what I'm watching for in gold. Crude oil, good set, nice setup developing here in crude. So we had this leg to the downside, which is certainly impulsive, as you can see, subdivided nicely. And we now have a pretty clear ABC pattern developing. So I'm looking for any move in crude into 7413, 61.8% retracement of the last leg to the downside, 6460. So we watch for bearish reversal patterns in this area. First target is going to be trend channel resistor, uh, trend channel support down into the 69 handle. But I would ultimately think we retest the pivot here and potentially break it as we still have a target on the downside of $60 in crude oil. So this could be a fantastic entry into this possible trade setup. So pay close attention to how we trade into 74.10, 74.60, especially if we make a pop higher here in price, but we don't get a new high in the momentum study that will give us divergence adding to the weight on the trade there. And then we've got, got this doubt in <coughs> this bearish setup in place, to take advantage of. So pay close attention. That's one that's going to be on my radar heading into today and tomorrow. Let's wrap things up here. Bitcoin looking for, we've got an equality objective, 26,360. And then we still have that 30,000 target on the upside. Equally at this stage, any close back through the pivot here, 28,214 use pullbacks to get into that 30,000 target. At this stage, it would take a closing loss of that 26,300 to open 25,800 and then 25,229 as the next downside targets in Bitcoin. But for now, the structure looks uh, corrective versus this last impulse to the upside. So I'm looking for uh, looking for responsive buying here into this 20, 26,300 zone for a 30,000 target in Bitcoin. Let's take a look at Apple. Any pullbacks in Apple? We are getting a little bit of pre-market weakness here, which is good. So 50, we're, we're trading 157s. I'm looking for any pullbacks into the uh, 153 to 152 area. I'm looking for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. My target is that 170, uh, 170, um, weekly trend line resistance in Apple. So very important there that uh, if we hold this 152, 153, then we look for that uh, 170 level as the upside objective in Apple. And Tesla, last but not least, Tesla, potential for a corrective move to the downside to unfold. If we take out this trend channel support and get a close through the 187 handle, I want to be on the short side for Tesla against the $200 level, has a 146 downside objective, and before we then could set a base for the next leg to the upside in Tesla. So those are the charts that I'm watching as we head into this week, certainly paying very close attention to that crude oil chart, the, uh, the gold chart. And, uh, and these equity markets, obviously, the E-mini S&P, I've given you very specific levels there to pay attention to. I also really like that uh, dollar CNH trade. So that's one that uh, I'm going to be paying close attention to as well.
So are there any questions? Uh, Richard, what are the settings of the oscillators? I will show you exactly what they are. So those are the, are these the settings? No, one second. Uh, this session is recorded, Richard, so the recording will be posted and you'll be able to come back to these settings via the recording. So uh, one of them is the, uh, the 14, 14, 3, 3, and then the longer term one. So basically what you've got on here um, to one degree or another is the fast oscillators are representing the, the H1 sine wave, I guess, uh, whereas the um, the slower one is representing between a four and a six hour oscillation. Does that make sense, Richard? So you can revert back to the video once it's posted on the Tickmill YouTube channels and you can get those exact settings uh, for your reference. Any other questions, guys? Okay, if there aren't, I'm going to wrap this session up here. I will just post into the chat for those that are interested in accessing the daily trade plan uh, for the S&P 500 or the e-mini S&P 500. We've got that. I'll also give you the trading view link for those who want to follow along with the daily Uh, yeah, Richard, volumes do come off into Easter or any holiday session. The other thing you want to pay attention to as well, which is quite a common phenomenon uh, in markets that not many, well, I guess people with less experience aren't, aren't aware of, where you have a strong trending market. So um, in in markets that have been trending strongly in that in that week, in the run up to a major holiday, Easter, Christmas, etc. In that week, you will often see counter trend moves develop as people book profits ahead of the holidays. And then when we come back from the holidays and the volumes return, you'll see those trends likely reemerge. So that's just a, a market phenomenon that's um, that's worth worth being aware of. Okay, any other questions? Can't see any coming through. Uh, so if there aren't any other questions, I'm gonna wrap this session up here. I hope you found it useful and we will reconvene same time next Tuesday. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much. <laughs>